OCW, the post pay per view podcast is back. I'm here again with the Doc Green, Adam, whatever you want to call him. Mm -hmm. And also a special guest. It's time to shoot hard on the roster. Drago is here too. Oh, hi, Mark. Hi, everybody. See, uh, it's it's about noontime for us, wow. but uh, I think it's about 5 p.m. where you are, Doc. 6 yeah, p.m. Maybe? Yeah. Five. Yeah, it's getting late. Well, no. with well, we had some promo room stuff uh, for Ladies' Night, but um, we'll if you guys can kind of chime in on that for the actual match mm. content. But we'll start on the very first match of the night in terms of a recap. It was Tara Deturis and Kat, uh, mm. myself and Katie. We what match. What, and then, and I know this one. This one did have some confusion. Uh, I had to PM a few people. So, what did you guys think? I thought it was okay for what it was. Um, I did enjoy Court's commentary, even though I think part of it was a little too on the nose in terms of real fake wrestling references. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I thought it was. I thought it was all right. I mean, I mean, it's like it's about as much as you expect for a for a match that's just been thrown together and not really built whatsoever. I mean, yeah, there was yeah, nothing wrong yeah. with it. I thought the finish was a bit confusing with with just the okay. random roll up. <laughs> There was a bit of broke. Okay. Right, the viewing, uh, the viewing party was really confused on that. Everyone was asking, oh, did you get a finish or uh, what happened? And, you know, I right, think I looked right. away for just a second and it was over. <laughs> and I had to rewatch re that one. <laughs> right, well, uh, a finisher was not hit, but um, it was an edited finish. So if you if you rewatch the video, you'll see that the two uh, health bars, the HUD, they actually were uh, put over top of that video to make it look oh, yeah, you've done that you know, more real. I, I have, yeah. That that roll up didn't actually <laughs> yeah. happen. The, the the real finish was edited to try and make it look, you know, a little bit better. Trying to, you know, I I thought to me it would be better, you know, for Tara's character as well as Kat's to make her look like, you know, she got away with one, and Kat is this fierce, you know, veteran that she was the underdog. So well, I, I confusing. think it's all a good story in that respect. The sort of confident yeah. newcomer and then the veteran. Um, the only thing I'm confused about is Tara's move set. She's supposed to be this like super naive face mm. outside of the ring, and then uh -huh. I watch the matches and I see things like eye rakes, uh, yeah, <laughs> running to the outside of the ring, and someone in the corner. Yeah, uh, she, yeah. The, there's a lot of choking going on, and I can I can tell you guys um, with no uncertainty that I pretty much remade m most of the move set after that match because I was unaware mm. of a lot of the things that were kept in there. She was she was originally made to be a little bit different than she ended up being, but you know how OCW mm. works, so. Right. Yeah. All right, cool. The next match then, uh, Bertha versus Ashley Blaine, the uh, the two coloss colossuses of the, yeah. uh, of the OCW. I was, actually, I was actually looking forward to this more than probably any of the lower card matches, um, mm. especially the, the cat match and the, I felt it should have been a little bit, higher more build but you know it, when you looked at the actual match itself it was kind of one-sided whereas well, uh blaine kind of dominated it really picked up in the last couple of minutes because most of it was just yes. Blaine just beating up bertha but i think mm -hmm. as uh, i think it was kent who likes to say the real match starts when someone turns red and i think that was definitely the case in this one um yeah, I think, I think Bertha got red very quickly. I think I think um, you kind of you kind of saw it coming towards the end. Like uh, I think I think Blaine had like a full red bar and uh, and and only like one or one or two yellow body parts. Right, right, right. And then she'd uh, and then a couple of minutes later she'd already hit the uh, the rebound lariat for the win. But this was fine. I think Angus had a few good calls in this match. Like as, like at the start when he when he said something along the lines of. Uh, the scariest woman in OCW and the manliest woman, and it's up to you to decide which is which. I thought that was yeah. good. I thought Angus good, was good in general for for a newcomer. Yeah, I think, I think he once fine. he gets used to it, uh, I think it'll be much more yeah. natural. Uh, my favorite spot was the instant mm. recovery after the super back suplex. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, the absolute no sell. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was a good one. Into the suplex city. Mm -hmm. I thought that was really well done. Yeah. There was there was yeah, another that, one too. It's it's been too long and I can't recall exactly. There was another spot that was that was really well done as well. Um, but it, I, you were right. The, there was a lot of Blaine domination, but Bertha picked it up later. And there was about a two minute stretch where she and and Spider does her move set just so perfectly for the for the monster that she is. A yeah, lot of throwing th throwing Blaine around the ring, and it's mm -hmm. it's fun to watch because you you know how big and scary Blaine is supposed to be and. 
still getting thrown around the ring. I was gonna say, like um, Adam and Spider really do get get who Blaine and Bertha are. Like they, they've done a really good job with, with to like put that match together with the with their respective move sets. I think they they flowed off each other quite well, even though it was quite uh, one sided, like towards oh, the yeah, game especially. Are, yeah. yeah, this yeah, was moveset this was good. Super important, much more mm. important than I think most people realize. I think a lot of people just like, you know, when the new DLC comes out, they're like, oh. I'll take all the DLC moves. Look at how cool this is. And it just doesn't, mm-hmm. I don't remember any of your moves and I don't really care for any of them and it doesn't match your characters. So it winds up being eh. Um, the handlers yeah. here obviously know what everyone doing. has the same. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. I was going to say, because if everyone has the same DLC moves, then then everyone's going to look the same and you're not going to stand out anyway. Like, at yeah, all. Some people just, some yeah, people just weren't like born to stand out. <laughs> Wink. <laughs> Well, if you know, if... <laughs> yeah, and and they and especially right. coming yeah. off the 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 Terra match where I did an absolute terrible job representing the character in ring, you know, it, it'll be better going forward. But not terribly, but, but yeah, but there shouldn't be. There was moves in there that shouldn't be, but we've already covered that. Um, yeah, so without having a storyline, um, you know, and in terms of any RPs and anything, that's about as well as you can do a match. So hats off to Spider and Adam, respectively. The next one, and then before we move on to kind of the middle of the card, the replacement match that we had, what was your overall thoughts on how Angus did on commentary? Because I know he was, you know, asking me, and I, I was just yeah. doing my thing too, so it's kind of tough to gauge when you're also on commentary. So what did you guys think just as, as viewers? I think he had a lot of good one-liners. Um, like I said, I think you should tone down the modern, the real r- modern fake real wrestling references. Um, mm-hmm. Stick to cars. Yeah, that's what he knows. <laughs> 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 no, but he was for for the first time. He he did really well. Yeah, I, I think I think so, at some points he got a bit like a bit like overzealous, a bit overexcited with what he was saying. You know, just trying to throw in like the one liners that are a bit too meta for maybe what what it was like what we're going for with with the whole OCW thing. But mm-hmm. I think overall, I think overall, he's he's quite he's he's quite naturally comes across naturally and like and like well naturally. So it, it, not none of the things he said sounded forced particularly. Right, right. So I think he did well. I think he did fine. Yeah, and as somebody who was there like prior the, to the recording, you know, you know how I run things. I, we, we didn't do any kind of pre-planning. Like I'm going to do this line and I'm going to bounce this off you, and you can tell because it kind of there's some stuttering over words and things like that that happened mm. because of that. But, you know, for what it was worth, I thought I was very surprised at, at how fluent it sounded. I think in many cases as well, it comes across better if it's done completely naturally. Right. Oh, hundred percent. I agree. That's why we do it that way for sure. Uh, so the next one was supposed to be Constance Fury and Alexa Hayes. So um, I, we, we haven't got to see a whole lot of Alexa and I wanted to watch that match, but you know the new Constance Fury look and the new. I, I thought look was good I thought the, I thought the new Constance look it looked it looked cool like it looks good I think I think I've said before that Aries is just good at making cores but I feel like it maybe could have done with a bit of explanation other than uh, you and Jay on commentary going basically making uh, Puerto Rican references to her. <laughs> and, and oh, I thought the, Jay was perfect. <laughs> Yeah, the, the, yeah, AJ. I, think, <laughs> I, I think couldn't control well. myself yeah. the, the whole time. I was like losing my mind because I didn't really know how to react. Mm. He just started screaming, <laughs> you know, Puerto Rican mm. references. So when mm. he doesn't talk about the game and when he's just playing it straight on commentary, I think Jay is fantastic. So do I. Yeah. I agree. I agree. He reminds me a lot of like Vince McMahon when he was on commentary. <laughs> yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. When he yelled Opa yeah. at the end, I, I had to cut that because at the end of the recording track, yeah, when, when, <laughs> he, when he when he yelled that at the end, both of us burst out laughing, and I had to cut it in the video before I rendered it. But it was it was very funny to listen back to. But uh, and I know that I uh, insider information, Aries made both of the calls for those that know Aerith. Um, that's not normally how she looks. She kind of got a rebrand for this. Yeah, uh, going into what could be a feud, but about the actual match. Um, I think the match was just like just uh, paint by numbers, really kind of just decent OCW work. Uh, though the ending was 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 good. I think like the whole post match post match angle, it maybe maybe uh, kind of got overshadowed by the whole Valkyrie Heather post match stuff. But mm-hmm. I think for what it was worth, that was that was a good moment. Uh, I think I did get taken a bit out of it when the music started playing before the finish was even hit. But I think other than that, the match was good and. And well, uh, yeah, it was it was well uh, done. So. That confused me greatly. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, it was a solid match. Mm. I think the handlers always know they have generally good chemistry, and there was no exception here. Mm. Uh, I do like the finisher reversals near the end, leading up to the finish. Yeah. Um, it was just a yeah. pretty solid match. Yeah. Yeah, you did. You did have the one finisher kick out. You did have the one finisher kick out too. So that kind of, it it went from, it went from a kind of meh match until the the end. You're you're right. The reversal started kicking in, and then you had that one kick out. So at that point, it started to get a little tense. Even though Mm -hmm. I did think Constance was in control most of the time, Um, it was fun to watch the new calls and you know some of the new moves. And I hope that we get to see more of both now that they probably have a feud. You know. Yeah, there, there's something to work with there. I think that I think that's always a good like. That's always a positive thing if you if you've got some kind of fallout coming out of a match. You don't want to just be like playing for the sake of playing. You want to be like trying to progress. Right. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. I still want to see uh, what is it? Uh, Alexa Hayes in action because I think the only match she's been in was uh was OCW Live. Am I right? Mm. Yes. Yeah. 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 The one with Lojo and Val. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wait. No. Was that wait? Yeah. Was that right? Yeah. yeah. That, that was the one. Yeah. Yeah. Because it was supposed mm. to be like an offshoot tag match, and then it turned into a triple threat. Um, yeah. No, Hayes wasn't able to be at the at the match, but yeah, I, I wanted to see Alexa Hayes too. And from what I know, talking to the parties involved, it was just a simple case of you know scheduling issues. They couldn't Cassidy mm. and and uh, Aries couldn't yeah, find a right. time. Nah, that's all right. Uh, I suppose we move on then to the uh, Fatal yeah. Four Way. I mean, I think first thing to mention here is that this this was quite. I think this was a. Uh, very good experience for Ashley Moore, really, like coming in like earlier in, in the night to do a video promo. I think that's that's that was a that was a positive thing, like to get her on the show. Yeah. And then obviously she was in the match. I was kind of sad that when she made her entrance, you did, you two didn't pick up that she was actually like I think. Well, I mean, I think she was copying, trying to copy uh, Dragana's attire from like the previous pay per view, just a different colorway. Mm. Mm. No, I didn't pick up on that at all. I was too busy listening nah, to but... Jay and his skeever. I don't. I didn't really notice it. I don't pay attention too much. No, of course not. I, I don't know if it was intentional. Is the thing? Maybe, maybe if it was intentional, well done. If it wasn't intentional, well, it's intentional now. It's all right. Yeah, I, I mean, I like the attire either way. I thought, you know, overall in this match and the promo and and just everything for Ladies Night for what it was with no RPs and everything, Ashley probably walked out as the number two most impactful, you know, person. Like she, she. Even though she lost her match, she resonated just a hair below Valkyrie from you yeah. know the show as a total. I thought she had a great showing. Right. Yeah. Uh, I think speaking of attires, do we, do we want to discuss the uh, the whole cosplay malarkey that's been a it's been occurring for the last couple of days? Yeah, oh, this is why we, we brought Drago on because I, <laughs> I know he wants, it, he's just going to tear into him. Right. It's not something I particularly do. Usually, um, so. Like the jacket that Drago's been using for the past, like, what, two years now? Um, mm-hmm. That started back at Resolution 11, where I mm. just said to the guy who makes my attires, he will not be named because if I do, people will be very thirsty and asking for everything. Mm-hmm. Um, I asked him just to make the jacket from Drive and, you know, do whatever else you want to do for the rest of the attire. And that was basically it. I've never done an entire cosplay i think um because it's just i'm very eh on it um i I guess Mm. it just depends on what it is and the timing of it but if it's done too much then your character sort of loses their identity is the problem yeah i feel like i feel like with this one like i don't mind uh, like flojo or ace or bray or anyone like that doing these cosplay tires but i feel like with this one i couldn't i couldn't like distinguish who was who I, if Flojo didn't have the name bar at the bottom of the screen, I probably wouldn't have known it was her kind of thing. Like, <laughs> no, I, 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 just, I, I, the, I was the legitimate drastic, on commentary. Yeah. I was yeah, legitimate the, on commentary when I said I like I really thought that they were going to come out separately, and Ace was just entering with somebody, one of the weaves from Otaku. I had no idea that was Flojo um, hmm. until Jay, Jay, who was also apparently confused, but he had already seen that you know before the recording. <laughs> he was like, uh, according to my notes, that's Flojo, and. and yeah. To kind of piggyback off what Drago said, when you, when you do a cosplay, I think it has to contain elements of of both. You have to have an OCW or a or your character in addition to you. You can't just go all in on the cosplay because yeah. then you're that character. You're no longer, you know, who who yeah. you're supposed to be. Well, yeah, I think I think the fact that you, you sorry, you go first. So 
people thought I was cosplaying the last pay per view when like I think Jay was playing. Oh, is that Rogue? And I'm like, um, oh, oh yeah. And he's like, okay, we'll yeah. go with that. I'm like, okay. I, I think that <laughs> might be, that might have been more just because everybody had a, a kind of special attire. He just kind of assumed yeah. that's mm-hmm. what you were going for as well. Um, but but I didn't pick up on that if if that mm-hmm. is what you were doing. Right, right. <laughs> I was gonna say just, just to continue on a little bit about, about Flojo and Ace. I think I think with Flojo, I think I think um, the fact that her hair just changed so drastically from from like I think yeah. she usually has that like like high bun looking thing. With all like the like it was all like curly and yeah, and, and it's very curly. Yeah, yeah, that's the biggest thing. The curl it went from curly to straight. Yeah, and, uh, and also very short. So mm. I think I think I think really if you want to if you want to like keep this like realistic continuity with the character, you're gonna have to have short hair for a little bit, just just while like it quote unquote grows back because it, it I just feel like that it's like. You, it's like how um, I, I said a little bit about how Damien Bourne put on thirty pounds in a week, kind of thing. Yeah, like yeah. That, that doesn't it doesn't work with me. Like it, it kind of takes you out of it a little bit. But yeah. I think other than that, the match was was good fun. I think generally, I think it worked quite well with the whole uh, like Flojo and Ace dy- dynamic, uh, trying to like cut down this yeah unattainable champion at the top who's got like and, and the they put strength. that. Uh... They had a great. There was a great finish to to Ace there with mm. um, Jorgana nailing the pile driver, and she put the pin. And like I, I was popping when Flo just slid back in the ring, and I was just you know it's a it's a very cliche wrestling moment, I guess you could say, but it, it worked well when she slid in and just stopped and allowed. The, I thought for sure it was going to be a breakup, but she just stopped. I and feel like with that one, m- good maybe moment. maybe she just didn't know whether she should break it up or not. To be honest, <laughs> there's only like but it works for story. So like it yeah, worked. yeah, that's true. Yeah, like it worked for it would have worked for the story to break it up. It would have also worked for it for them not to break it up, which they obviously went and did an RP afterwards about it, which was good yep. initiative yeah. by them. But yep. I, yeah, yeah, that was good. And then uh, Flojo hit the finisher, uh, got kicked out by the resiliency, and then that was and then there was a rocket kick out of nowhere, and that was it. That was over. Uh, who's going to stop? Yeah, you, you don't usually get you don't usually get to see that that fin out of dragana and i don't think jay jay told me after the broadcast he had no idea that that was her fin yeah. so i was like yeah you can hear in the commentary that the all of the excitement seeps out of my voice because i thought she was going to do it I thought she was going to beat dragana and then mm. all of the i was like oh and there's yeah. the rocket i would say i would <laughs> so, say i would say here i've i've not wanted flojo to win a match as much as this <laughs> like at this point yes yeah so attire aside that that's the yeah. one so the uh, was, you were you were in the match yes yeah yeah he, I, you speak. I, yeah, it was um, it was it was getting down, and I I did like the sort of uh the aspect of the Devil Night Devil's Night rematch, as the, mm, the final yeah. two in that match. Oh, that it came down yeah, to yeah, the final yeah. two. Yep, great. Yeah, um, and then obviously coming out of this as well, there's the Ashley Moore's moved on now in the in the become homeless. No, well, no more moving in with Valkyrie. I think I think that's a nice bit of progression for her as well. Again, I think that just further reinforces like the initiative that she's taken now. Like now she's been given the ball, so I, I hope she rolls with it. And I think I think right. it's only up from here now. I think that RP was it was great, you know, post mm. Devil's Night to even further add her to like the list of in, impactful people for Devil's Night or uh, Ladies Night, excuse me. Um, she's kind of doing a little bit of a face turn. She's been a heel the whole time, yeah. But doing a little bit of a face, turn, you actually felt some uh, relatability or compassion. Yeah, in that you're RP. a bit sorry so, for it. Right. Yeah, it was it was well written for sure. Um, in terms of the whole match, I thought it was. Probably better than the main event if you take out all of the storyline stuff, just in mm. terms of quality of the match. There was a moment where each of the competitors pretty much dominated. It had mm. a real mid-2000s champion feel where Dragana really wasn't the one throwing people around the ring for the majority of time. You, you know, you were focused in on Ashley Moore kicking ass, and then Ace had a, a few minutes swing of kicking ass, and then at the end, Dragana was able to pull it out. But um, I thought it was the, the match of the pay-per-view. Yeah, I think I think one thing I'll say just coming out of it, I think maybe with Dragana's character, this whole like the whole um, her being like this silent dominant like champion, I would like to see a, a little bit of progression there. Maybe she gets a bit more like arrogant or something as she's like racking up these wins over all of the uh, viable contenders to the championship. I don't know. I mean, it's completely up to you where you want to take with it, where you want to go with it, Joe. But I I don't know. That's what I'd like to see. I'd like to see something like just uh, just moving on kind of thing. Well, that's what she has her manager for. <laughs> <laughs> well yeah no i'm not saying yeah, she I mean, has I'm, to speak or anything but 
I, I mean, right. I'm closer to it. So I, I've worked with Drago on things in the past and, and that's why I find the Dragana character more fascinating than some others, because it's, uh, it, there are aspects of different, you know, levels of emotion that are displayed and she doesn't even have to say anything. Mm -hmm. Like in the one that we did together, it was a completely new level. It wasn't this, you know, dominant silent queen thing. And then he, he's worked with Flojo in the past and Flojo has this weird dynamic that they're doing together. So I, I think we have seen that, but, um, in terms of like seeing it more, that would be, yeah. I guess, dealer's choice. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, that's all then. Uh, we'll move on to the main event, of course. The uh, the I, well, I'd say the finale of the uh, of Alt vs. the trilogy. Well, it will be if it is a trilogy. So I think I think first and foremost, uh, seeing Heather come out like full on. Like I think at, at Devil's Night she did have the demon thing, but but not so much as like this one. Like the, when she came out with like the whole the, like the Castellanity tattoo on a, on like her abdomen and the the massive. Well, did she have the face with the like? Did she have the mask with the horns on? Or yeah, the felt horns, the as you match. said. <laughs> yeah, the felt horns. Yeah, yeah I thought I thought that that tie looked like really cool. I, I thought that like um, I just think the progression of her, of like uh, Heather at the at summer side was just like it was just regular old vet, uh, Heather, and then now she's coming out fucking demon style, like doing a thing. Uh, Valkyrie came out uh, a bit more normal, uh, especially well more normal than how she came out at Devil's Night. Uh, right. But that's all I really have to say about that. She's 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 a good core creator. The, the attire looked good, and then we got onto the match. So, you got any thoughts about the match like initially? Well, well, just on the entrance stuff, it's just a preference for me. I'm not a big fan of things like entrance gear being left on for the match. Mm -hmm. So things like the horns, and then at Devil's Night, uh, Valkyrie kept the the wings on her head. I, I kept those on during the match. You know. I, I'm not a huge fan of that personally, but the attire in general was very yeah, I, I, I well, think they're, well yeah. done, as it always is from Doc. What do you think, Drago? Yeah, I think the attire was just really well done, as you said. Um, I just wish the horns were just removed for the match. Yeah, that's understandable. It kind of looked a little silly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I agree. I, and you could have done something with face paint. Like You can keep the demon aesthetic without yeah. keeping mm -hmm. the horn. Because uh, when I, I look, I thought it was attached to a mask. Mm. And then the match started, and, and I guess... They stayed on, and I, I was, you know, but, but Jay saved it with the felt comment. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, the match itself, I think, I think the match itself was was uh, was really good. I mean, generally, like Valkan don't know what they're doing. They're they're just again, it was just another example of of good OCW players doing good OCW thing. I think the the fact that there was not really much like uh, cell action really like um, was saved by the post match stuff. Uh, I think there was there was some good brawling on the outside, but then it kind of came inside. Um, that reversed the, I think it was a, uh, like a half and half suplex or something like that, or like a dragon suplex or something. And I just bam, hit the knee. Mm -hmm. That was it. It was about, what, like 12 or 13 minutes long, I think. And that was it. And that was all she wrote. Yeah, I, thought, and... I thought it was a good wrestling match. I just don't yeah. think the match itself was appropriate for the story that was being told. Um, I think part of it has to do with the changes to the new cell. So I think the only weapon you can use are the steel steps. I don't think you can pull out weapons from the ring in the cell match anymore, but as a guy who's been in like two cell matches um and shane mcmahon myself multiple times <laughs> i was a little disappointed not to see uh any of this happen during the match i mean of course the yeah. post match segment really helped but i mean that's just to me it needs to happen during the match yeah I, I... and they tried i feel like they tried it at the end yeah and you're right it was a good wrestling match it, it felt like a beginning of the feud match uh, because it took so much of it took place in the ring and like, but hell in the cell matches are so difficult in 2K19 because they're they're pretty objectively terrible in terms of the yeah. kind of damage you can do. Uh, like you said, at the end though, they did tr start to get outside and throw each other against the stairs and you know hit each other with the cage and they did a little bit, but it it just wasn't enough in the match. I, I totally agree. With yeah, that. I think there though, I think it's kind of like an issue of um, how much do you plan going into a match, as in how much is uh, how much would you consider like acceptable to plan saying, oh, we're going to go outside, we're gonna we're gonna do this, like I'm gonna throw you through the like. Obviously, you wouldn't want to script anything. Like it's it's what do you want yeah. to quote unquote script? Like do do you want to just tell your your opponent? Let's let's make sure we take this to the outside. Let's make sure we take this like on top of the cell or whatever. Uh, but it's like it is like um, well, a dealer's choice, I guess, of, uh, of how that's like how that's going to play out. Right. And I think with them, they I I, it, I think it was a bit. Um, I think well, it was clear to me, I guess, that that they hadn't planned anything going into it, which is like it's good that like that's perfectly natural and fine. Um, 
but maybe this could have done with oh um, let's take this to the outside let's let's have a like a fun match let's make let's make this feel like a hell in a cell match not just a one on one match with a cell around the ring well i don't i don't think it has to be planned um i mean no, I, no. I haven't i haven't been in a cell match obviously in no, in, a, in the competitive environment uh, so I, I, Drago would be better to speak to it, how much you talk to your opponent beforehand. But I don't, I mean, I don't think the, the, one of the big spots that I did that was unplanned was in the OCW live against AC Cobra. We didn't plan that table spot. I just mm. kicked his ass until, uh, you know, he was unable to reverse it. So yeah. at that point you j- just continue to throw at people out of the ring or exit the ring and make them come after you. Like there's a lot of ways you can do it without you know, explicitly messaging your opponent and saying, Hey, you know, we're about to go out here and do this spot and that yeah. spot. Well, well, I mean, I, I guess Dra- Drago, Drago would be more palpable to I, speak I've on done that. it both ways. The first cell I did was with um, was with Crossbones or Parker's alt, and we didn't mm-hmm. discuss doing whatever in the cell. We we, we went through it. Uh, I tossed him off it twice. I helped him chopped him off the cell twice. Um, <laughs> um, but in the match I did later with Mugen in the cell, um, he basically said to me, this match isn't going to end until someone gets put through the cell. I'm like, okay, that's fine. Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah. I think don't necessarily. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, don't, ne- yeah, I think ne- don't necessarily script your matches by any by any means. Like, uh, there was a discussion I think a couple of weeks ago about about um, talking about spots and like um, I think there was a couple of us talking about um, whether you should try and call like tell um, say we want to hit this mark before the match ends or we want to hit this and we want to do that. Um, I, I would say, well, obviously, don't don't script your matches start to finish because that's not competitive. But I I think um, especially for stipulation matches like um, Hell in a Cell and like um, I guess like TLC matches and stuff, you want to get the stipulation involved. You want if you're in a TLC match, you want someone through a table. You want you know like if you're in a if you're in a Hell in a Cell match, you want to take it to the outside kind of thing. I think that's fine. Like, it's, I think it's just personal right. preference to where you draw the line of how much you want to plan going into it. I guess. Yeah, yeah, so uh, that, that really – oh, sorry, Jericho, go ahead. Yeah, it just depends on the person who you're working with. Mm. Um, it can go either way. Uh, yeah. I've done it both ways, and I don't think there's really, like, a better way to do it. I mean, yeah. of course, I, I'd only really do it for stipulation matches. Um, yeah, of course, yeah. That's, yeah. yeah. Hmm. So All in right. terms of the overall, I, I kind of – said earlier just before we go i don't know if you guys have any thoughts on any of the rps or want to talk about any of that storylines a lot of this was really outside of the heather um well i guess the championship match too i was going to say most of these were either non-story or story starters um outside of the last one the the uh, impressions that i had it was probably valkyrie first because the i I did admittedly pop and she i thought she was just going to hit her with the cell and that was going to be the end of the video but then the three knees like consecutively to try Mm. and keep down the monster i thought was a very good angle um so she's got to take number one as valkyrie usually does in these women's (laughs) affairs uh number two is easily ashley moore to me just because of the um just the the amount of time she was on the show and and how much impact she had in the match. Usually, Ashley's not known to be great on the sticks, but but he really showed out, you know, yeah. with Ashley Moore dur- during the actual match. So I think she was two, and I think everybody else is pretty much below her. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, th- I think I think everyone in, did in well. some order. Yeah, I think I think yeah, I think in no particular order. Everyone everyone um, did like they they pulled us they pulled their way like they made this show like decent like a, a decent twitch show i think there's again it's sort of it's it's kind of um to be fair this this match was kind of um well this match this uh, show was kind of like uh, the the like the alternative style of twitch shows that that um i think jay wants to put across like so you've got the twitch exclusive which is which would be like ladies night and like a uh, ambition uh, as well coming forward uh, but then obviously you've got this like you've got Devil's Night, which is like uh, this real pay per view feel. But this didn't particularly have a massive pay per view feel to it. But that wasn't in, like massively like that wasn't a problem. But um, I think as just like an hour and twenty long, uh, yeah, I think it was an hour and twenty minutes, something like that. Yeah. Like, this show mm-hmm. didn't drag. This show was entertaining start to finish. I think everyone did a good job to make this like what it was. So I think this is another good template for what what Twitch exclusives can be in the future. I guess. Any closing thoughts, Drago? Uh, yeah, I'd have to agree. I think for if this is the style that Jane wants to go for, then absolutely let's go for it. Mm. Um, I I like the commentary. Uh, I think, like Adam said, everyone pulled their weight. Um, 
I do wish. Mm. Go I, ahead. Well, you're going to some controversy. Like to, for this to become like, <laughs> have RPs as well, you know, like the the old style. Um, because I think this show yeah. could have used a little bit of that, but that's my preference. I've always liked yeah. the written stuff. Um, but Agree. you know, as far as like a Twitch or YouTube, whatever Jay wants to do, exclusive show, I think this is very well done. Yeah. Like I was I was a hundred percent. You know, I'm always a hundred percent on board with anything that has written content or storyline content. So I agree with you there. <clears throat> and I'm going to chalk it up to it being break time. The reason that you know a lot of writing, we didn't do writing for Ladies Night, but because I think it would have been easy. You know, we only have so many women on the roster. Women that weren't booked would have had an opportunity to get representation. Uh, it wouldn't have been like seven pages like Devil's Night. There's what yeah. five matches. There would have been just probably 10 total RPs. It would not have been hard mm -hmm. to make that happen. So may maybe round four, but <laughs> uh, if you guys have nothing else, nothing else, who knows this was good. good. Yeah. Yeah. I appreciate well, everybody well. coming on. Yeah, uh, Drago well. as the guest, the, yeah. we, we've made the agreement that uh, the, the next Twitch pay-per-view that we'll all be watching as a collective will be Lucha Kaboom. No official date for that, really? but We've, we've agreed that's not canon. It's just going to be for fun. So we won't be doing a podcast for that one. We will be back uh, after the clash to Yay. ramble and talk about that. You know, m maybe with Drago again, maybe with another guest. We'll, Who knows? we'll see. Ooh, you should definitely stay tuned. Yeah, mystery. <laughs> <laughs>